G'day folks. Well today we're going to tear down this uh, load cell assembly from a Yamato dataway system. It's an automated uh, weighing station system that I dismantled a while ago, or at least part of it I had. Um, this is the weigh head assembly off the top of it, very heavy weigh head assembly. Uh, as you can see it's mostly stainless uh, plastics and that's about it. It's pretty much all stainless. Um, the load cells themselves are mainly what I'm interested in. A few people told me I could do some pretty cool stuff with them. Uh, as you can see, it's been grabbed by the excavator at the yard. One of the cells has been ripped clean off. That cell's smashed. That one's bent. That one's been shoved up inside the housing, so that's trash. That one's broken. These ones here might be alright. That one might be alright too, but it's taken a fair bit of a, a whack. The machines just grabbed the whole thing by the top and picked that up, picked up that whole half ton cabinet by this weigh head assembly. So it's done a bit of damage, but the main thing is I'm just going to scrap it out for stainless. That one there's the crushed one. It's toast. That one's might have a good load cell in it, but that one snapped in half, so. We'll at least be able to dissect the load cell itself, which is in the core of it, and uh, have a bit of a look at how they work. I don't know much about them myself, but yeah, apparently you can do some pretty cool shit with them as well. I'd like to see one turned into something like an audio pitch shifting modulator or something like that. Sort of like an advanced wah-wah pedal or something. Uh, I've just been watching an uh, industrial engineer come musician called Tristan Schoen, author and punisher. Uh, big thanks to a friend of mine for getting me into this, this guy because uh, he doesn't just make industrial music using purely using the computer, he actually uses physical input using industrial machines that he's built himself. I'll uh, show you in a second. Yeah, I'll post a link to the uh, video in the description, but this guy's using linear and rotary encoders and other similar um, interface methods to uh, create sound. He uses a um, Arduino controller or something on each one of them and it processes through the laptop. Pretty incredible. And he's built all these machines himself using industrial components. So I'm kind of interested if the um, load cells could be used for a similar sort of audio thing, not just weighing things. In theory, uh, it's going to be varying the signal depending on how much pressure you put on the load cell. So it'd be interesting to see if anyone could do something like that. Okay, I'm getting a bit into it. Got most of the bolts and things out. And the work workmanship that goes into this is pretty nice. And that's been milled out. This is the bottom part of the load cell that had these uh, dispensers hook onto too. That just fits on like so. Product fills up in here and the load cell detects how much weight is in there and then once it's at a predetermined weight or within range, it uh, dumps it. That thing there opens up the um, the shutters and it dumps down into a bag or whatever's further down the line. It's just for a accurately weighing small product, whether it's nuts and bolts or um, food products or plastic components, bags of little terminal plastic mouldings like these, they'd all be weighed in something like this if they were making several million of them at a time. So. Yeah, it all comes apart for cleaning. But yeah, nice workmanship, that's for sure. It's all Japanese. Nice stainless steel, I'm going to keep some of that. Uh, assuming it's not completely welded. That base there, I think, is 10 mil thick. Yeah, that's why it's so heavy. This thing weighs about 200 pounds. It's bloody heavy. Yeah, slowly getting there. Lots and lots of nuts and bolts. Need to find an 8mm nut driver now. <laughs> I think I got one of them from Tow Wrecker. Also known as Belts Towing. I'll uh, dig that out of my screwdriver collection and uh, finish removing all these and this, they, all these load cells should fall out. Yeah, they're not held in by much now. That's good. I know a lot of people ask if I could use a tripod or set up for the whole shoot but then I'd end up with a bloody hour long video which I can't upload or at least not in any reasonable time so you just have to put up with my point and shoot interface I'd much rather be teaching stuff than simply 
having half an hour of me undoing screws. <laughs> so yeah, this goes to show you can make really basic crude videos and still be somewhat successful on YouTube. I mean I'm not really fussed about making special finely polished videos with flashy intros and good voice acting and standing in front of the camera talking. Oh bugger that, I can't be bothered. <laughs> And like Brad, he, he can't be bothered doing much with videos at all anymore. So what you learn is what you learn. Silicon gaskets and things, wash down. Because this whole thing is pretty much wash down proof. You can wash the whole thing down with a hose. Yep. Okay, so that's that. From what I can tell, these four are the best of the lot. They're, um... They don't appear to be bent out of shape too badly or anything. Uh, those ones there are all bent, mangled and uh, smashed. These have been put through a bit of stress, like you can see that stop there is nice and square. Uh, where's that one? You can see the legs bent up a bit, so that's been pushed all the way up. It hasn't gone up far enough to really wreck it, so with a bit of luck that they'll be alright. Uh, that's the load cell itself. It's, I'll open up one of the dead ones and show you. For now, these ones can stay intact until I decide what to do with them. I know somebody was interested in them, or some, a couple of them, but they're very heavy like this. Uh, it'd probably be best to remove the load cell itself and just ship that if it's going international, because the rest of this stuff isn't really much use. Okay, the air cylinder's something. I could pull that out. There's only two, four bolts holding them in. I'll salvage all the air cylinders, strip down a couple of those just to show you how they work and just pillage all the screws and things off them. So they're good 316 marine grade stainless steel screws. Uh, even the side plates there, I've got to make some ends for a oil catch can for Dad's diesel van. And since the cylinder's stainless, I might as well make the end caps out of stainless too. So it'd be easy just to cut a couple of circles out of some of this material, even that end housing the main frame. I'll cut it out of that. So yeah, there's a lot of good re reusable material. It's just a shame I don't have a TIG welder yet. I can't really weld stainless here. But it's nothing to do with it. at work on my lunch break. We've got a great TIG welder and a good MIG too. $10,000 Fronius Pulse Synergic MIG. But that thing's yeah, way overpowered for really fine stuff like this. I want to be able to make a nice, very nice seam weld. So that's where the TIG comes in handy. Anyway, I guess I better dismantle one of these. Well, there's not much to salvage from the back housing because it's welded so damn well. It's fully seam welded on the outside and stitched on the inside. That's a full seam weld down there. They're all stitched. And the outside, it's all 100% seam welded all the way along. So I'm just going to be salvaging some bits of material off that and the rest can go in the bin. Very nice workmanship though. Don't know if it would have been welded by a robot or human. I'd say human operator more than likely. But yeah, you never know, maybe it was robot welded. But for a TIG weld, well, I don't know. Do they make TIG welding robots? I imagine they would. Yeah. Very nice workmanship either way, but it's got to go. I'll just salvage some. Uh, plate out of it and uh, yeah, salvage some bits out of those dead load cells. Okay, I've got one of the smashed ones apart and stripped some of the material off the broken load cell components and it's pretty easy to see there's these strips over the stress points in the load cell which are these very thin webs and uh, it almost looks like maybe a capacitive sensor or something. There's one on each point, each corner that'll go, through, go together like that and each point has a sensor pad whatever it is I'm guessing either capacitive or resistive and uh, depending on the amount of flex in it it obviously alters the readings on or readings coming through these uh, pads I really don't know any more than that not without getting on Google and having a look which I will shortly but yeah that's the busted one I've just scraped all the um, silicon coating off it just to reveal the pads and the fine wires that go to them. 
But yeah, at a guess I'd say it's capacitive, but we'll find out for sure when I look it up or someone looks it up. I don't know, I might leave this as a viewer thing. <laughs> Give you all something to do. I'll finish stripping the rest of this down. These air cylinders are nice. It's a Kogan air cylinder, DA 20 by 40. So probably 20 mil bore, 40 mil stroke. Yeah, very nice. Stainless steel end plates, various blocks and spaces. Really nice stuff. It's great for making little hobby projects and standoffs and things. But then not everyone gets access to this sort of equipment. I was lucky I found it when I did, otherwise it would have ended up in the steel bin. Yeah, fascinating stuff. Yamato Dataway. Wouldn't been wouldn't have been a cheap system either. Someone would have spent a hell of a lot of money on it. Okay, well that's the end of that one. <laughs> Made a bit of a mess. Yeah, nice little air cylinders. Kogani air cylinder slim, 20 by 40 stroke. Or bore and stroke. Various bits, just I'll chuck it in the spare parts department like that. If I need something off it, I'll pull it apart later. I've got to drift those little pins out before those ends will come off and, and get rid of the rest of it. But Yeah, they're kind of neat. They're full of locking, locking lugs. Well, not locking lugs, but um, cams to open and close the uh, little dump bucket, feeder, whatever you want to call it. Parts hopper. Yeah, parts hopper. Um, yeah, they do look like a, they do look like locking lugs, though. Like on a rifle bolt, how it rotates and locks into a uh, the breech, face of the breech. I recall uh, Mr. Gatling used that design for his Gatling gun. Each bolt would rotate and lock forward and open and close on cams like that. Lock in, fire, unlock, lock in, fire, unlock. And each one would do that. Every part of a rotation. I think it had six barrels, so six cammed bolts, six ejectors, six of everything pretty much. Quite a fascinating device considering it was made in the 1800s. Use of cams, levers and uh, rotating mechanism. Very nice. But yeah, a lot of good spare parts in here. Either way, I'll uh, rip into this one and I'll have a look at an intact, or somewhat intact, load cell. This one isn't smashed. And the other one might save that for a live autopsy one day. And just do a start to finish, take it to bits. Well, actually, no, there's two. So, yeah. That one's got a smashed cell. That one there is not too shabby. It's just been twisted a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. Probably doesn't take much to ruin these. Um, I doubt it would take much at all, considering how sensitive these little uh, strips would be. Okay, so that's the intact load cell. Uh, it has seen a bit of abuse, but it might be alright. See, it's taken so much of a hit that it's bent the uh, cast alley bracket upright, or upwards. Bit of a mess, but doesn't appear to be any cracks in it, so I'll figure out how these work and uh, figure out a way of testing it. Or at least experimenting with it either anyway. I've still got one of those two down there which is intact but we'll deal with them later. Main thing is I got rid of the bulk of the damn thing. <laughs> I'm trying to clear this area so I can strip the Jag engine down next and uh, yeah other little equipment autopsies later on in the uh, week. It's a Danfoss ICAD 600. That'll be an interesting little autopsy. It's a valve actuator. Um, programmable valve actuator so yeah that's about all for now and thanks for watching I'm gonna go look up what these are and how they work